Selling the final two investment property, just a painful and horrible reminder how ineffective real estate is as a as an investment vehicle. Why did you go from the traditional finance and real estate to now being Bitcoin only? I have so many war stories, Robin, about real estate. <laughs> Five years ago, we had an average home price in America of 32 Bitcoin. And mm. now the average home price in America is just six Bitcoin. You might be robbing your future self of wealth if you don't choose why. How much satoshis do you need for buying a home in 20 years? I feel really hopeful about the future. I really see in the next 10 years, the traditional finance system of home loans and mortgages changing wildly. You said in the bio, 12 years in the real estate and traditional finance. And now you transition to Bitcoin only, or are you still in the trans transition phase? Uh, I would say transition is that the final piece of the puzzle, just uh, selling the final uh, two investment properties. And if it was up to me, Robin, they would be sold already because we made this decision a few months ago. It's just the the time lag of uh, exiting real estate. It's uh, you know you got to you got to give notice in Australia. It's ninety days, um, and because we want to you know, prepare the properties and sell them in their best light, which you can't always do with a tenant in there. Um, got to do some renovations to bring it up to scratch. So, and, and then take it to market, auction, six-week settlement. So we probably won't see our money out of those last two properties until about possibly December. So um, just even that exit from those last few properties is just a, a painful and horrible reminder how ineffective, you know, real estate is as, a, as an investment vehicle. So, but, it, but almost all out, still got my own home, um, but yeah, have sold the investments um, uh, for Bitcoin. I like the philosophy. I own my own home. I own my own business and I own Bitcoin like that. Those are the three things you, sh you should own. I feel like uh, if you have uh, enough money to have next to your Bitcoin stack as an own home, that's, I always, I think that's fair. Like you don't have to rent or would you say renting is, even if you have the means to it, renting is better? I. I had a, a, a very strong stance over the last, um, up, up until I bought this particular house I'm living in. Um, so yeah, we, we held uh, a bunch of investment properties, but, but rented, um, somewhere was super cool as well, where we could never have afforded to buy. Maybe down the track when, when Bitcoin uh, goes up, but, um, so we lived in this amazing area, you know, water views and whatnot, just, you know, renting. Um, and that was very tax effective because we had our, our business so there was a lot more you know um, tax deductions in terms of you know what you could deduct with rent um, and expenses and, and whatnot um, and uh, yeah so that that was a point where we, we just yeah only held investments but what happened was you, you get a little older and you're you know you have kids and the kids go to schools and they get uh, you know build friendship groups in those schools and you know in the past where you can sort of just up pretty easily from a, uh, from a rental property and you know, and, and switch over. Um, that was getting harder as the kids got older and more ingrained in there, you know, and, and and probably for us as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I did have a point in time where I was all for that, and um, but uh, but I think I, I'll probably go back to that at one point. But um, probably once the kids have finished school and stuff, um, I'd, I'd love. I'd, I've already got my eye on uh, Logano actually as a bit of a Bitcoin uh, retirement hub, um, but that's another story. Oh, why, why? Uh, well, when when I met you over in uh, in in Prague for the conference, uh, I saw you know the Plan B um, uh, guys doing things in in Lugano, and uh, so yeah, I, I didn't even really know it existed to be honest, but I saw it was there on the on the on the border of uh, Italy and Switzerland, and I just got our our you know Italian, I got my Italian passport, and, and our kids have theirs as well. So, and, and we've got Italian heritage. So that was really interesting. And I looked into it. And um, so they accept Bitcoin. Um, I th I'm, I'm not sure how widely adopted it is, but I, I saw a video recently where it's it's almost as, as adopted as El Salvador, is my understanding. You can pay your taxes in Bitcoin and it's accepted in most of the shops. Um, it's still in a transition phase, but I feel... Yes, Switzerland's very forward thinking with, with, with money and wealth and finance. So, uh, I can see by the time I might want to be there in maybe 10, 15, 20 years that, that it would be, uh, advanced to, to take full advantage of a Bitcoin uh, stand over there. It's, uh, Switzerland is great because it's in the middle of Europe. 
but not in the EU. That's uh, for me a, a major advantage. Um, the only negative is, but if you have the money, it's no problem because it's the cost of living. Like I think Switzerland is literally the top country of when it comes to to cost of living uh, from all the countries ar around the world. Uh, that's the only thing that I'm like, okay, I have my salary remotely, uh, so I would s extremely benefit from a country like Malaysia, Bali, or like some other country where the the cost of living is just way down. Um, but Switzerland is amazing. Like I'm Austrian, so I'm really close to Switzerland. Uh, you can just and uh, roll, roll over into Switzerland. <laughs> it's right yeah, there. Yeah, right? Roll over. <laughs> I, I see all the advantages to Switzerland. It's, it's a, it's an amazing, amazing country. And, uh, it's, it's something that I'm also having an eye on. Like Lugano is, is nice. And I know some Bitcoiners that actually went from Italy to Lugano. Uh, and uh, I've not met an Austrian to met, uh, went to to Switzerland uh, till now, uh, um, um, a Bitcoiner. But yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, mm. But before we get uh, <laughs> on all those topics, um, why did you go from the traditional finance and real estate to now being Bitcoin only? Um, probably the the main reason. So it was it was kind of in stages. So I discovered Bitcoin in 2021. Um, through NFTs, funnily enough. So as a, as a musician and a creative, uh, I, I discovered NFTs and I, I, I love the idea of digital scarcity. Um, I got it straight away and I thought that's amazing that you, you can um, prove digital scarcity with, you know, your, your band's, um, your, your favorite band's album. You know, you can prove that you bought the first copy of that album and, and that led me into, I, I'd say Bitcoin and I guess the rest of crypto and Ethereum. And I understood it enough that I knew Bitcoin was the grand, the granddaddy, and but I didn't understand it enough to to ignore the rest. So I kind of went, you know, half half with Bitcoin and Ethereum um, until I revisited it a few years later, and uh, you know, like probably about twelve months ago, and went deep. And you know, uh, Michael Saylor, you know, meditations, you know, <laughs> for hours on on end and whatnot. And I went, oh, I get it now. Um, it's, it's, it's Bitcoin only. And I guess, uh, as a, you know, being in finance and, and credit and mortgages, uh, I, I didn't really understand for the last 10, 12 years that I was a party to printing money. Um, and I don't think most mortgage brokers really know that they're party to, to that. Uh, I don't think most bankers and 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 you know uh, financial planners uh, i i really don't think they actually understand how it works and because i'd like to think that i was really good at what i did and very forward thinking yet i still yeah I, I didn't really get the money printing thing you'd hear the stories in the background you'd see you know debts in the us and all these things going on um but you just kind of think it's someone else's problem or it's you know, if you're doing okay, then things, you know, then you're okay. So it was really once I understood that every time I wrote a million dollar loan that I was injecting a million dollars into, you know, into the um, the money circulation. And I was kind of a bit disgusted <laughs> that that I was, um, one, that I didn't know it and, and, and two, that I, I was kind of, yeah, this this puppet in this system that I that I hated and, it kind of made my 16 year old rage against the machine self kind of make sense like 20 years later, you know, where I was sort of like, now I know I've been, you know, never fit into this system or like this system because I, I never felt good about being a mortgage broker and, and, and doing it. But I, I kind of liked helping people win um, and understand how to, to grow their wealth. So it just seemed logical to go, this is, this is the vehicle. Like, Bitcoin's the solution. It just makes so much sense. Um, I, I need to just lead by example and 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 step out entirely, um, and uh, and go all in on uh, on Bitcoin, which led to the I guess the strategies around um, the, the investment side of it as well, and, and teaching family and friends and whoever will listen, <laughs> whoever wants to listen. Uh, that's great, and I, and I think I mean I was before in stocks. Uh, almost went into real estate, but then came Bitcoin along and kind of prevented me to go uh, into real estate. I was really de deeply researching, like, how can I enter? What's my first uh, property that I can own? Like, I was really like, I think half a year away uh, of, 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 of buying my first rental properties. I was even in talks with banks already. 
uh, and, and finding out like, how can I actually do it? Um, as I was successful with stocks, uh, and Bitcoin and, and then the time came where Bitcoin got, and I was like, why should I own real estate when I can own Bitcoin? Like that's, that's the better way. It's a better asset. And without the, all the headaches that come along with, with real estate. I have so many war stories, Robin, about real estate. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, do you want to hear some of them? <laughs> like, yes. Uh, I think, yeah. I think, uh, the, the, this thing is really interesting because when we talk about, um, and when we talk about real estate, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a safe haven. Uh, it will always go up because all people will always need houses to live in. Um, but yeah, let's go into some disadvantages. And then I want to go in like this argument, real estate always goes up because I have some something interesting here. Sure, sure. So um, probably a little uh, quick backstory as to um, how I got into it. So uh, I was a musician throughout my 20s and um, I uh, making no money, but having lots of fun. And then I was like, how am I going to make money, you know, as I sort of hit my 30s. And yeah, so I discovered real estate. And in Australia, you know, real estate, uh, you know, goes up about seven to 10% 10, 10 a year, like kind of religiously. And you, you see people buy one property, they'll either apply value to that property by renovating it or, you know, or, or doing something of that nature. Um, and then harvesting the equity out of that property and using you know that 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 growth in equity as the deposit for the next property and then you kind of rinse repeat and and, and build a portfolio that way and i was like wow I'd, you know a, you know a silly um uh you know muso can can do this i don't need a uni university degree and i, and I love maths and 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 you know um, spreadsheets and, and and logic so it all made sense so yeah, I, I started going to property seminars, reading books. There's a famous book in Australia, um, Zero to 135 Properties in Four Years or, or something crazy by a guy named Steve McKnight. And uh, yeah, I was like, I'm going to get 10 properties. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this and um, got declined on my first um, purchase uh, <laughs> like, and because I had a, a, a phone default of about $200 with a, um, with a phone company. And I went, that, that shouldn't happen. And I basically learned about um, finance and I st found myself telling the mortgage brokers how to, how to get things done. And I thought I, I should just become a mortgage broker and, you know, um, and do this myself. And um, so as I, as I did it, it was, um, yeah, you could, you could just, as I said, apply value to properties and, Sometimes even as I was buying a property, I, I knew it was w worth more than I was getting it for. So I, I knew straight away as soon as it settled, I could, you know, increase the loan amount, take the equity out and, and buy buy the next one. So um, it, it just seemed like a really easy way that you, I say easy, it, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of work, but uh, yeah, it was, it was, there was no barriers to entry, I, I guess is, is, was the punchline. So as I did that, I was telling my family and friends and everyone got quite interested because it was, you know, sometimes I was buying like three properties in a year or, you know, and, and I was very aggressive, but I probably fors uh, forsaked um, quality for quantity, definitely, because I was a lot younger and, and sillier and it was probably a little bit more about bravado and just just trying to stockpile rather than um, getting, being more thoughtful around what I was trying to acquire which is kind of i think society's fault or the finance system's fault that you you even have to you know think about these things which state are we buying because we've got you know seven eight states in australia and is it is it a prop is it a is it near the station is it not is it you know what's going to who's what's the property manager going to be are they good are they bad um anyway so got through uh all of that and, and built a a portfolio and um and had to convince my my wife along the way that this was a good idea because you're carrying a lot of debt um which is which is pretty scary you know as it as it builds and you sit you put your head on the pillow at night and you're like okay we've we're millions of dollars in debt i mean we've got you know all these these properties and and they're not necessarily sustaining themselves there was a shortfall that we had to meet um each month um but it was doable, but yeah, it's really, really scary. Um, but yeah, then the uh, then you've got that 
burden of just managing. It was like it was like another business onto itself, uh, managing, uh, you know, all the all the various rental incomes coming in. Every time you get a phone call from a particular real estate agent, there's a there's a state in Australia called Queensland, and I had a number of properties there. And um, for some reason, I just had bad tenants in this particular area because it was a lower demographic area. And every time you see the, the, your phone ring, it's like the, the, the tenants, you know, punch the wall or, you know, that the tiles are falling off or uh, there's a possum in the roof. So, yeah, you just have this list of um, things going wrong. So, yeah, when you get into Bitcoin and you press buy and then you sit back <laughs> and relax and take your breath out, it's such a different experience. It's a, a, a real, it's a bit spiritual. It's, um, it's so beautiful uh, when, when you can all, all of a sudden have the perfect sound money found and you can just like rely on that one to uh, preserve your financial energy and you don't have to play this game. Because for me, as you also told me, that, that real estate is more business than saving. And using real estate as saving is, is, is kind of kind of misuse of it because it's a business and you can make money with it and it's 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 okay to do that but you should not be fooling yourself that it's it's a savings technology um and kind of like uh you were one of the as you mentioned before one of the um beneficiaries the, the one of the persons who actually benefited from the fear system with the that building then you build real properties that you own uh that's That, that's something that the, the fiat system allows uh, for the people who actually study it. And and if if you study the fiat system, you you kind of go ahead like, oh, I I could use it now to to build my my portfolio and and kind of take advantage of 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 this system and go from from the poor side to the rich side, um, which is also interesting yeah, to to think about it like that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And 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 what I used to um. What's an interesting observation and looking back on our hate is is my main role, like even though I was facilitating the the finance for people and strategizing on how to um you know how to buy the next property and 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 you know we re really took a old school Robert Kiyosaki um, approach to it, you know, like let's buy income producing assets and you know let's buy them as soon as pro possible, you know time in the market, not timing the market and um And really, I felt I was a a investment therapist, if if you will, like because 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 the home loan home loan side of it and the finance side of it um, was was relatively easy most of the time. Like you know that most people could do that if if you've got a, a degree of knowledge of of the industry. Um, but where I, I where I, I guess I excelled to you know uh, blow my own trumpet was really helping people through this huge decision like a property decision investment decision which has lots of zeros at the end it's really scary and people um you know especially if it's a you know whether it's a single or a couple or whatever the case uh you know this because there's so many variables that they can screw up um that will affect the outcome of this investment people just get they freeze and so they're there and you go all right you're pre-approved you can go and buy the property and that's when they freeze and they're like yeah well what 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 state you know what as i said before is it is it a is it a unit or a townhouse or or um or an actual house um is it is it going to be on a main road or not like it it's just so many variables is it is it brand new so it has lots of depreciation or is it going to be something existing that i might have to renovate but if i renovate it then i can apply value is that a good thing or do i just want something new do i want something i can subdivide or build a granny flat at the back of just so, so many options um that yeah you, you can just uh really seize up and because you, you do feel like you might be robbing your future self of wealth And, and, and a particular financial outcome if you don't if you don't choose wisely and because there's no right or wrong and and it was never my job to say do this don't do that it's just here's here's the options like you know, be armed with as much information as you need to to feel comfortable in the decision um looking back on that 
uh, I just hate how the fiat system forces you to do that. It, it forces you to um, make these stupid decisions that you've got no control over the outcome just so you you don't lose the money that you've rightfully earned it's like fuck that man <laughs> like it's um so understanding bitcoin where all that you know, all that craziness is taken out of the equation once you understand how bitcoin works and i, I think that's the the spiritual side or, or i guess the side where you're like that's how it should be that's maths that's science that's that's the universe um and i think you know when i you know a property settles for for me or a client you know it's like congratulations settled big fat debt <laughs> you know like liability um stress you know all these things press buy on bitcoin and it's like you know just watch the dollar go down against it and and relax um so it's uh it's so nice to be on the other side of that and seeing people still in that world and you see property spruikers going, these are the top suburbs that are going to boom and you know, don't buy here. And I just hate that stuff because it's just, um, so I feel like, I feel like it's, I'm on a mission to, you know, how to, you know, I was never, I was never in that and, and like that, but I always loathed it. And I'm like, yeah, how, how can we pull people away from that system of, you know, um, in, in, into this more enlightened, um, intelligent way of preserving wealth. Do you feel that the uh, real estate market will will crash in terms of, of Bitcoin in the coming years? I mean, in US dollars, it's always hard because they print so much that it's almost impossible for the real estate market to crash in the US dollars. Yeah. Um, look, I, I think I the the more I see things, you know, even in the last few days with, with Trump's announcement and, and various things going on with um, nation states, you know, uh, you know, on their eventually going to gobble up the Bitcoin. Um, I think, uh, I don't know about crash, but certainly it's, it's, it's lost my, it's lost my um, stake in it. Um, and I, I see that being a very real migration, a hundred percent. Like I, you know, what's what Michael Saylor says about, uh, you know, what's real estate about 330 trillion dollars uh, worth of the, of the world's wealth. And, I think um, as people understand Bitcoin and go, I, I mean, so many barriers to entry with real estate in terms of you've got to have a borrowing capacity. Uh, you know, you, you can't buy, you know, uh, you know, 10 million Satoshis worth of real estate necessarily. You have to buy the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, as people see it as a superior asset, it just doesn't make sense to stay in real estate anymore. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if it will crash, but I definitely see it over time falling it to its utility value. Maybe a, a bit of a premium, but certainly not uh, the premium it's got now. And um, because the like young guys here in Australia that are say in their twenties, I've got like nieces and nephews and whatnot. They actually think that their parents need to die before they can afford to buy a house um, to live in. Um, like the barrier to entry, you know, like average price in Australia um, or in Sydney anyway, is somewhere something like one to one point five million dollars, um, which is crazy. So, yeah, these guys think that they're never going to be able to buy a house. They, they, when I talk to them, they think it's, it's the fault of the politicians or tax structuring, you know, and and things like that. They don't realize it's broken money. Um, I think when they see it, as we as they watch, you know, podcasts like 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 you're doing and get educated, they will over time understand that yeah, it doesn't make sense to invest in in real estate in in, in analog assets or or you know a, a tangible asset when you've um it's been solved um with cryptography and blockchain. So you, you say one one point five million is the average uh, price of a, a house in Sydney right now. Yeah, in yeah. Sydney, I, th I think in Australia the average is uh, is is a, a little lower, might be eight hundred thousand or something like that. But Sydney's, um, yeah, something like a, a mil, one point two, one point three, something like that. Stupid. <laughs> uh, I, I I look at always the the priced in Bitcoin twenty one side. It's really cool because they have uh, everything priced in Bitcoin, and then you can also see, uh, and this is leading up to my next question. Is that yeah, there you can also see the 
average home prices in America, average home prices in the UK over the last like five to I think even 10 years they're going back. And the last five years is also interesting because five years ago, um, we had an average home price in America of 32 Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. now the average home price in America, according to, to the price in Bitcoin side, is just six Bitcoin. Um, so the, the, the development, of course, when you look in, in Bitcoin, real estate is, is, is going down. Do you have, I mean, that's an, a question that's impossible to answer, but it's interesting to speculate about it. And it's interesting to, to kind of get a, a grasp on how, how valuable uh, Bitcoin will be. Do, do, you, do you have a grasp or a framework to think about how much an average home in, in Sydney or America will be in, in Bitcoin in like 20 years? How much Satoshis do you need for, for buying a home in, in like 20 years? Uh, I... I, I've done. I do projections in relation to terms, so I can reverse engineer what that's going to look like for my Bitcoin stack, if 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 you will. Um, yeah, you, you can also do the projection in, in US dollars. Like both, we can we can discuss. Yeah. So so for example, like you, you can just do some macro calcs, right? And you can go. So let, let's say. Um, uh, you know, in Australia, and this sort of copies and pastes in, in, in different places around the world, you know, slightly different numbers. But, you know, let, let's say you, you, we'll round it off and you need a million dollars for a home and you need to work out how to pay that off. And then, you know, right now, it, it, in you know, probably need around about a, a million or one and a half million in, in some sort of unencumbered assets um, for retirement to, to produce, a, you know, say about $100,000 um, a year to live off. Now that's that basically doubles. So, so if we're if we're talking a, a compounding uh, inflation rate of about you know we'll call it seven percent per year, uh, so that doubles every ten years. So in ten years, uh, uh, yeah, you'll need about uh, three million dollars uh, uh, for retirement, and in twenty years, you'll need about six million. And which sounds crazy. And when I sit down even with with my wife. Uh, I, I needed to show her these figures to scare her, to get her excited, um, or not excited, to get her scared enough to consider Bitcoin as deeply as I was. Because I was like, "What are we going to do here in, in in twenty years' time if like if inflation continues as it has? Like the figure you need to retire today, you know, million dollars or one and a half million, um, th that's not the figure you're going to need in twenty years." It's, I think it's something like 5.8 if you compound um, at 7%. And that, that really woke her up. And that's kind of the conversation because a lot of my friends are sort of entering their 40s and retirement funds and things of that nature, which kind of seem like worlds away into the future, they're starting to go, oh, what are we going to do now? Um, so what I've started doing is I've, I've made a few um, calculations and projections, just very simple compound interest things where you get your you know your retirement funds and you look at what it looks like if you keep things in property or you know, a retirement fund or, or stocks you know in an asset that's uh, you know going up at say seven to ten percent compounding year on year and then and then you break it out let's say you do an 80 20 allocation so you do 80 in your traditional assets and then you do 20 percent in Bitcoin. And then even in, in the Bitcoin allocation, you go, well, let's do the bull case of, you know, you know, 50% and, and dial it back 40%. What's it look like at 40%, 30, 20, kind of again, like what Sailor did on the, um, at the, the uh, on his last presentation. And, and it, it, even at 20% um, with small allocations of, uh, you know, 20% growth and 20% allocation of your, your, your whole net worth, it's still wildly better than if you didn't then if you didn't do it you know um so yeah uh ba basically uh that that's how we've pulled together you know how aggressive we want to be with bitcoin or, or you know how how we um work out what to allocate based on those uh on those projections in in terms of what we're going to need in 20 years time to uh you know to have a house that's paid off and to and to live comfortably mm -hmm. And, and and what do you say is like the so you're saying like six million you you need like the six x of that in in five years you said or like what was the number? 
Yeah. So in, in terms of re- like a retirement figure, it, 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 yeah, it's about $6 million. Uh, um, so I'm, th- I'm thinking, so we've we got to what, reverse engineer that in terms of what, what Bitcoin would be. Is that, is that what we're, um, yeah, I don't know. We need a calculator, don't we? <laughs> but I, I, I think, I think it's going to, um, I mean, I even think a, a very, um, bearish case of like 3 million um, per Bitcoin in 20 years. Like I, I, I just don't even see how that could happen um, in, in terms of, I think it will be wildly more than that. So um, I, I just, I'm encouraging people I know to even just get to, just get to one Bitcoin or, a, you know, a 10th of a Bitcoin to start and, and try and work, work your way up to a, to, to a whole Bitcoin. But um, I've, I've actually had some interesting arguments with people in tr- in TradFi, uh, a lot of people in real estate think that um, you can uh, you can leverage property, right? So you you can borrow. How much can you borrow in Austria, for example, against a property? Can you go up to like ninety percent or? Oh, uh, that that's uh, a long time ago that I was diving into this topic. Uh, but I guess a lot, like it's in, in Austria, especially if you live in the home, you can do a lot of the things like, uh, now there's a new law where you get just hundred thousand euros, uh, um, subsidized from the state. If you live a house and you w- want to do something. So there's a crazy laws and in really a big incentives to buy your own home. Um, but for rental properties, like, uh, I, it's, it's so long, like it's, it's four, four and a half years ago that I was looking into this. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I, I would be surprised if you couldn't borrow eighty percent or, or or something like that and put a twenty percent deposit. Um, I know that's the case in in the US and a, and a lot of other countries. Um, you know, here it's it's not too dissimilar. You know, ninety percent is probably a uh, you know where you can go up to. The some instances we go up to ninety five percent, which is quite crazy. So I've had these um, heated discussions with you know property investors that, that are saying like. Um, you know, because you can leverage into real estate so aggressively and only put a five or ten percent deposit, and you're not getting the growth on your five to ten percent deposit, you're getting the growth on the worth of the asset, right? So, if you've got fifty thousand dollars and you put, you know, that's your deposit, but you've got a five hundred thousand dollar property, you get the growth on the five hundred, not not on your fifty thousand investment, if that makes sense. So. People have been coming back at me and saying, "Yeah, but if you had fifty thousand um, dollars invested in Bitcoin, like they're trying to sort of, I guess, throw the leverage argument into it and saying it, you know, it's because you can't leverage it." Um, but I, I've done some calculations, and if if you do a ten or twenty percent um, uh, deposit in a property, and the property goes up about ten or seven to ten percent a year, um, it, it's still only works out to be about a, a, a 25% sort of uh, uh, you know, compound growth on your stake or your deposit in the property versus what Bitcoin's delivering at the moment of say, you know, 45, 55% return. So it's still wildly more beneficial to just be, you know, stacking, uh, stacking Bitcoin than leveraging into to property with a, um, with a loan, which because there, there was a period where I thought, oh, maybe they're right. Like, you know, because you can leverage so aggressively in, in property, um, which you could do, I, I guess, with Bitcoin, but, uh, you know, that's that's another beast altogether. Um, but yeah, I did the maths and, and it checks out that it's you're still better off just because of the 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 big returns on Bitcoin. But I guess possibly as, as Bitcoin diminishes over time and the returns maybe do drop to 25 or 20 percent in the decades to come then then it might be a different scenario but then property will be demonetized by then as well so it's who knows that's interesting story with with properties right like when they have a lot of monetary premium on them because a lot of people see them as savings vehicles and investing vehicles what if that kind of changes and they drop to a utility utility value how do how do you even assess the utility value without the monetary premium of, of a real estate property. Well, how's this as well? Like even the other day, because I'm on this um, uh, this plight at the moment for Bitcoin, I'm, I'm very anti-establishment <laughs> in a polite, respectful way, I think. 
And um, so anyone that's telling me I can't do something, you know, I'm pushing back on. And so with one of the properties that, you know, that we're selling, um, I contacted the tenant directly to get access so we could sort of, you know, do some assessment of what we need to do. And the managing real estate agent called me and said, oh, did you contact the tenant directly? And I was like, yes. And she's like, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, why? And she's like, well, because you've got to give seven days notice. And if you don't, like, you, you know, you could, you know, be in breach and they could take you to the tribunal. Uh, and I was like, wait, this is my fucking asset. Like, you know, it's, uh, you know, who, who you, you know, who are you to control, you know, how I do things? And firstly, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I asked them permission. They gave me permission in writing that I could, you know, come within the seven days. I was respectful. We're all, you know, human about it. And um, it, was, it was just a, an interesting sign that, you know, like you, you've got the banks and governments that control you know, things and we're all aware of that. But even down to, you know, this micromanaging of, you know, this real estate agent going, don't contact unless it's through me. It's like, no, F you, you know, like, uh, and yeah, just to leave that behind just, it just feels like, uh, you know, I'm just getting the last, uh, you know, um, bobby pin into the, into the handcuffs where I can shake them off and Shawshank Redemption and then leave, leave the property behind. But yeah, a lot of, lot of stories like that where you, know, you just feel you're being, uh, you know, controlled with these, with these assets. You know? If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin, keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up it's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the bitcoin on an exchange and you can get a five percent discount with the code robin at the checkout visit bitbox.swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup your security setup and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. Very true. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because even like um, there's always this interesting thing like uh, people find like, ah, but I own my home. Yeah, try to not pay the speeding ticket for long enough. They will come to your home and they will be like, huh, sorry, that's now our home. Like, <laughs> do something that the government or the state doesn't like. Uh, or like, it could even like, in a normal case, usually like the Western civilization, I, I don't fear in Austria that the government will come and take my home. Um, but uh, their ca political things can change. Like uh, the power can change. Uh, and if you're on the wrong side of, of, of history or if, if you're on the wrong side of, of the government that you're living in, that you happen to live in, all of a sudden uh, you're maybe one of the bad guys without even really realizing it. Uh, so they can take something from you uh, because you don't really own it. You just own like you, you want a piece of paper that it is yours, uh, but they have the monopoly and violence and they will force you out of that property if they have to. And so what do you really own? I mean, also then there's the argument coming up like, oh yeah, Bitcoin, they can also force out of you. Not really. Like you have the, you have the option to die with your Bitcoin. Like if, if you, <laughs> you, 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 you yeah. probably will not do it uh, if they are hard enough against you, but you still have the option. Like if someone comes with a gun to you and you have a house or you have a, a piece of gold in your hand, they can shoot you and get the gold. If you have Bitcoin and you only have it in your head uh, and nobody else knows how to get to your Bitcoin, the private keys and, and the seed phrases and stuff like that, they can shoot you, but then they also shoot the Bitcoin. Like the, the leverage is all of a sudden on you and not on the other people with the gun. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've, I've done so many thought experiments and, and I've even heard you talk uh, on um, 
on this a lot in terms of you know um you know self custody and and you know um you know different ways to protect yourself um you know with with multi sig and going down that whole rabbit hole and um and basically experimenting with all the trade offs right um because there's no perfect uh solution it's it's just a matter of what you know best suits uh you and um yeah, it's. Uh, I, I think that's a big barrier to entry for Bitcoin at the moment because you know I'm orange orange pilling a lot of people at the moment, um, and you know, especially you know parents of it, it, people my parents' age, for example, and um, so they're bought on the exchange, and you're like, "Congrats, guys, you've exited the system," and and it's like, "Well, now you got to get it off," and they're like, "What?" <laughs> it's such a big jump just to get them to buy it, and then you know, talking you know hardware wallets and you know air gapping, and and they're like mind explodes um so i think as that piece gets uh easier um over over the years um that that will certainly help the cause but um it, it just reminded me as well robin with uh just in the last week or so um i had some some people some friends moving some money from bank account to an exchange to make their first bitcoin purchase really excited and uh bank said no and and I knew that was probably going to happen. Like I've, you know, basically, you know, what we encounter in Australia anyway is they they just close your access to your uh, to your internet banking, and you have to call up and they scare you with a whole bunch of you know this could be a scam. If you transfer the money, it's on you. If like, um, but in this case, they just said where um, you're not allowed to move the money. They'll try they'll try to move like whatever it was, $20,000 $20, or something. And they just said, no. And they said, we, we, we've got financial advice on this. And they said, you know, everything that needed to be said. Um, couldn't have said it more eloquently. And they just said, no. Um, and funnily enough, these guys tried doing, um, uh, you know, different, different transfer amounts. And then they got to $999 and that one went through and they went, all right, let's let's do twenty of those, um, and and it got through. And it's the, the account still got closed the next day, but the money somehow got through. So that was an eye opener for these guys to go. Um, what this isn't our money, like this this is a fun ticket, and 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 it's up to the bank whether they choose to to honor that or not. It's not it's not actually our 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 life savings, and that's that's a huge awakening. I think when people see experience that in real time. I always make the um, comparison with the jacket at the, the bar. Like when you go to the nightclub, you usually have to get off your jacket uh, and give it to the guy uh, to, to get into the club. So you get off your jacket, you give it to the guy, you pay like a euro or two euros for, for that usually or sometimes not. Uh, and then you get like an IOU basically. You get a token where it's a number written like 147 or something like that. Uh, and that's your proof that you have the jacket and you put it back and you make a photo of that. So yeah. <laughs> if you lose the thing, as, at least I do it like that. Then you yeah. go into the club. That jacket is no longer with you. That jacket is now owned by the guy who does the, does the wardrobe uh, physically. Yes, legally you own it. Legally you have a token, which uh, is interesting that you have a token, but what does it well, really Not prove? even legally, not even legally, right? Because it's a, a jacket is a bearer asset, you know? Oh, yeah, actually, uh, you don't even really own it. No, uh, there's, and no, there's no registration of title uh, of, of your ownership. Maybe you've got a receipt uh, of it, but but even then that's... that's uh, it's hard to prove. It's like it's like gold, and and I think I've only really understood bearer assets, you know, gold as a bearer asset, um, in in the last uh, twelve months. Um, again, I've, I've kind of I'm ashamed of things that I didn't know. Um, I was in a bit of a silo with what I did with finance and and property that I I, I just didn't have to know these other things. Um, but uh, yeah, it just reminded me of an interesting story. Uh, so I've got my kids into into Bitcoin. They're like uh, nine and ten years old. And so I try to expose them to as many um, interesting stories as, as possible. And recently we were um, at a uh, Lebanese bakery, uh, me and my son, uh, just getting some, uh, it's called manouche, like this Lebanese pizza. And uh, I, 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 you know how you always work Bitcoin into every conversation, right? <laughs> and so, so I said, I said something like, oh, have you been back to Lebanon recently? Um, in my mind, I thought I could bridge the gap between them, them maybe talking about the, the currency collapse. And she was like, straight away, she was like, yes, but 
you know, Lebanon is fucked, you know, like, and she, she said, them, I didn't even have to ask. She just went on a rant going, you know, they've stolen our money. And she told me the story of the lady that went into the bank uh, with a fake gun. You, have you heard that story? Uh, no, I didn't know. So, so basically the, the currency collapsed in Lebanon, kind of not too dissimilar to what's happening in, in Turkey now. Um, and the banks just closed and said, you, you, you can't get your jacket back. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't get your, your money. And, and not only that, leading up to that, they, they were doing things where the, the banks were you know, convincing people, like she told me a story, that there was a, she knew of someone that owned two hospitals, a very wealthy man, and the bank convinced him to sell one hospital and put the funds into the bank and promised you know, that he'd get a better return than if he had it in the hospital. Um, and yeah, they, they just, they literally woke up to the banks closed and, and you, you just couldn't go in and get your funds. And this, you know, it's, this is a bit of a famous story, but this lady went into the bank, um, with a fake gun and robbed the bank, if you will, um, for her own money. Um, and I understand it wasn't even a, a large sum of money. Um, it was, it was pretty sort of nominal, but it was just, it was all she had. And, these guys that ran the bakery were saying that they had about 200,000 in Lebanese pounds. It was kind of their life savings. And they luckily chose to spend about $125,000 of that on a property in Lebanon that they could visit when they'd go on holidays because they live in Australia. The other 75,000 disappeared. Like it, it got stolen by the, the bank, the government, the system. And so, um, yeah, they, and her explaining that so because i think when i say stuff to my kids it can sort of go over their heads and it's just dad raving about bitcoin again so w when you see true stories of people that have just lost you know um almost half of their life savings um you know i'm pretty sure that will you know sort of go into the dna of my kids to go this there's something wrong and, and they're going out into the world with their eyes open but uh yeah, it's really interesting when you when you hear those stories for um, face to face. It's it, it when the closer it comes, the more real it gets. Like we we like oh no, it's it's bank collapses that is only there. No freezing bank accounts. No, that's that's not in our Western civilization. Oh, then trucker happens in Canada. They can mm. do it when it do. They can do it in uh, in Canada. They can do it in the US. They can do it in Europe. Like. <laughs> Like Canada is, is supposedly one of the, the, the Western countries. Uh, Australia uh, has, has done it. Uh, um, then when we come to collapses, Turkey is is, is quite close to Europe. Uh, so so why not uh, Turkey also? I mean, Turkey, a part of Turkey is all actually on the continent Europe, but not in the EU. Mm -hmm. uh, so like it becomes closer and closer and people starting slowly in the West to actually realize, oh shit, that currency collapse, that that bank freezing, that transaction is not going through. That's a real thing. Like we 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 have to do something. But I still feel the pain is not high enough. Most people don't care. Yeah, I I tell you what. When when I went to Prague, it was it was for a, a couple of things, and, and one was just to to make sure that I wasn't in this um, YouTube silo in in my head in Australia, right? <laughs> Um, watching your videos, watch you know, you know the, the Michael Saylor, um, you know, on repeat stuff, you know, uh, Robert Breedlove, you, you know the usual suspects, and you go, am I just in? Am I just being? Is the algorithm playing a trick on me here? You know, is this as big as I think it is? I I, I knew it was, but I, I needed to see it. So I, I got my ticket for B, uh, BTC Prague. You know, like only two weeks out or something. It's very very uh, impromptu. And getting there and straight away talking to the people on the ground, like, you know, the, the, the guys in, in Prague, you know, and, um, and even some guys working at Trezor that were Russian and, and just having their, their money blocked, you know, like, you know, can't, you know, can't leave the country and um, just, you know, restrictions with, with former regimes and current regimes and, we're we're very lucky in in Australia um, that you know I, I guess things are you know they're not ideal but like compared to some other parts of the world um, you know there's there's degrees and um, I, I think why people are so blasé in a place like Australia is because it's um, as you just said there's not that real need to know 
And so, yeah, just having these conversations um, at the conference and then even leaving the conference and on the way to the airport, the, the Uber driver um, was retiring. He was about 60 years old and he couldn't move his money from, from Czech Republic to Spain. He was buying in Spain because Czech Republic was too dear, too expensive to, to buy his final retirement home. But then moving the money out of Czech Republic to Spain was um, a whole other thing. And I said, you should study Bitcoin. Like, like that, that could be an interesting way to, to exit your funds. He's like, I'm too old. But yeah, I, I, so I guess it made it very apparent to me that um, yeah, every, every part of the world has their own uh, degree of heartache with, with money and money restrictions. And um, you know, I, I haven't been to Africa or, or, or South America, but I, you, we know the stories, right? Like that's where it's the worst. And uh, I really love that that this is a technology that serves you know you know people in, in in Africa, and they can create circular Bitcoin economies and um, and be banked, you know, uh, or Bitcoined, if you will, for the first time in their lives. It's just. Um, I've always known this in my bones that I that I that I love this this freedom um, and this decentralization. But I guess Bitcoin's kind of put a face to it, or a, you know, some sort of um, tangibility. It's interesting when when you said too old because um, I was surprised on how old Bitcoiners actually are. Like when I came into the game uh, four years ago, I thought like, oh yeah, everyone is like 20 in Bitcoin and, and uh, people above 30 or, or, or 40 don't, don't have Bitcoin at all. Uh, but then I get to my first meetup and I was like, oh, <laughs> people are like the young people here, are like 32 and I'm like 23. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, the average is like 40 or something like that. Uh, and then I also now I have actually data, like I have around 10 to 20,000 people, uh, watching my YouTube videos alone, uh, every week. Uh, and from that, I know that those groups of people that know, listen to my podcast and I'm 25. So like probably younger people more listen to me than usual. Um, my average audience is 47 years old on YouTube and mm -hmm. I have 7% of my audience is over 65 years old. This mm -hmm. is more than the people under 25. Like I have more people over 65 than under 25. And I just recently um, uh, um, published a video with a 75 year old man uh, on my podcast. This was my oldest guest till now. Uh, yeah. and it, it's, it's fascinating how old people get it. They, they are willing to listen to, to the, to the younger generation and they get it. And, uh, I think, uh, being too old is, is just another excuse as like, oh, I'm not tech, tech savvy enough to understand Bitcoin. No, I, I'm not one of the finance guys. I don't want to understand it. Like, it's just a, a cheap excuse. Yeah. My, my, my take on that is, um, is, is very similar. And, uh, I, I, the way I see it is, you know, uh, you know, older people like our parents, um, or you know, even grandparents possibly, are um, they've lived and they've they've lived, you know, they've they've seen things go up in value. They've they've probably most of the time, you know, made um, bad decisions with money because you're forced to. You're forced to make some sort of decision of, of where to where to park your money, and so there's a you know, favorable outcome for the future. So they've gone through that arc of of um, of of losing <laughs> losing their wealth along the way, and they didn't really understand what was sort of going on. So to to hear you know something going on that that could be a solution to that, um, because they've got you know uh, war uh, scars from just you know living life. Um, it's interesting where my experience with talking with young people, like I th there's some young people like your age or a little bit younger where I thought they're going to get this straight away. Like I've, I've got a, a nephew who's a, ec a economics teacher and I'm like, you know, he's going to get it right. Like um, let's talk about in inflation and, you know, money printing and, and you know, all, you know, um, let's, let's get him watching. And I even paid him to watch Lynn Alden's um, broken money video. I said, I'll give you a hundred dollars <laughs> to watch this. I thought he would come back to me, Robert, and be like, Matt, like, tell me about Bitcoin. Like this is, and he just pulled it apart, like, and, and just, you know, 
talked about quantitative easing and how negative gearing should be banned and the government should be uh, getting together with private builders to create more property in Sydney. I was like, did you watch the wrong video, dude? Like, what the, like uh, you're you're the young guy. You're you're the you're the next generation. You're the rebel, right? Like, you're the fu system. I'm I'm the old guy. Like, what's happened here? This is this doesn't make sense. And I think that made me realize you can bring a horse to water, but yeah, you can't you can't make it drink. And I, and I thought that's when I was like, okay, I need to. I'll let people come to me. <laughs> I can't like it. If they're interested, um, then then we'll talk. But I, yeah, I think that was a moment of like, I don't need to orange pill everyone um, before they're ready. Um, and, what, and what is happening organically as I post things and whatnot, I've got people that I went to primary school with or, or high school that are sending me DMs like, yo, Matt, how you going? How's the kids? Uh, this Bitcoin thing, dot, dot, dot. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's certainly... I think it, even a sailor says it's it's very interesting because it's money, it's finance, it's wealth. We all need and want that, um, and it's technology. Those two where they cross over is really interesting. Um, for there's there's not many people that don't find that combination of um, of, of information something to listen to. You know, so yeah, so we've got to get more young people in. Uh, I, I feel like. Young people are sometimes even more plugged in than, uh, I, I'm talking like really young people under 20. They are sometimes more plugged in than, uh, people of 25, 35 till to the 40s. And I, I guess the reason is the reason why they haven't experienced life that much. Like a 35 year old has experienced some weird things with the banks that he cannot do that or he, he has some experience where like, Oh shit, the, the system tries to screw me over. Like a, a young guy is just protected by the parents. Uh, when he wants something, he just gets to that and says like, Oh, please, please. I want that, <laughs> that thing. They, they also don't really like money is still a, a weird thing for them. I, like I needed to like 18, 19 to actually understand a little bit. Oh yeah, I have to, I have to do myself some work to get money. Money is just not flowing out of the air. So like, I think that's, yeah, young people are more plugged in there, if you like. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, um, we, we going back to that, that conversation I had with my nephew, for example, um, because he hasn't lived those, those heartaches of, um, losing some money to whatever reason or, or whatever the case. Um, so for example, you know, he, he, he was saying that, um, is negative gearing is that a term that that you're familiar with? I'm not sure if that's universal. Actually, not. No, I never heard that. Uh, so, so negative gearing in Australia, and I, th I think it's a thing in, in probably the US as well, is where you can you get a, a tax deduction. Uh, so the interest that that you pay on an investment property, or any investment actually, uh, the interest is tax deductible. Um, so uh, there's an incentive to reduce your taxable income from your, your job or your business. And there's an incentive to own investments because the, the interest or any expenses associated with it are tax deductible, um, which is, which is a really favorable, uh, sort of tax structure. And, um, so for example, he'd say to me, like, you know, the government should stop negative gearing, you know, so, you know. The, the wealthy investors, uh, you know, are disincentivized to invest, and and then you know, first home buyers can can come into the market. But my argument to that is, I mean, that's just a redistribution of of the wealth. You know, like you know, you're you're making that unfair for you know, what if a first home buyer has just bought an investment, you know, with the rules of you know tax rules as such, and 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 then you change the rules for them to favor you to make that you know to make that easier for you like it's just making something unfair for one person to make it fair for the other and that's 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 what's happened for 10,000 years right so um the, you're just putting a band-aid over over the solution and just you know playing playing god if you will and and deciding that this uh minority should have something and this this one shouldn't where bitcoin doesn't discriminate in that manner that the rules are fixed uh we all we all know what they are as we sit at the bitcoin table um it's not necessarily a fair starting point for everyone like you know you, you'll come into a particular uh 
price point to Bitcoin. I, I will, um, you know, whoever came in 10 years ago uh, got a significant discount. Whoever comes in in 10 years uh, will, will pay a significant premium. Um, but still, we all know the rules and we know they're not going to change. Um, so, but again, yeah, I, I think because they, you know, these, um, that, you know, younger folk haven't been slapped around um, by, by life, um, it's, uh, it's easy to sort of sit by ideologies that, that haven't been tested yet where young people like, um, as I said, coming back to my kids, and I still do this with other people's kids as well, there's some really cool cartoons, for example, where they, they talk about the, the coins of Rome getting you know, shaved, um, the gold coins and, and melted down and you know, made into, into new coins so they could inflate the currency that way. Or, and uh, so straight away, our kids get it. They're like, yeah, if we go shopping and something's expensive, it's like inflation, dad, they're going to stick printing money. I think they'll grow up with with this uh mentality of um you know be on guard and and you know take control of your own uh own destiny hopefully hopefully I, hopefully I have, for <laughs> I have a great quote from from Elon Musk uh, that I heard recently about that very topic that your nephew basically uh said I mean Elon Musk and Bitcoin is a whole nother story that I don't want to get into right now but he had a great quote about engineers uh, and he worked with like probably the most engineers that anyone ever worked with, uh, with Tesla and SpaceX and all the things. Um, he said, uh, uh, great engineers try to optimize a thing that shouldn't be there in the first place. And the amazing engineers ask that first principle question is like, is that thing even like, should, should we delete that thing completely and either make a new one or can we also live without it? Uh, and they try to delete things also with coding the best coders, uh, don't code more lines of code. They, they take like 10,000 lines and put it in like 500 or like a thousand lines of codes. Uh, they, they make it uh, more efficient and, and they don't try to optimize a thing that shouldn't be there in the first place. And I think that's was where, where your nephew was going. He saw that fiat system and he wants to optimize something within the system, which is when you only see that fiat system, a good thought but he was not ha ha seeing the big picture where I was like, oh, this whole thing should not be there, not only the small thing. Yeah, I've, I've been making you know, uh, analogies with um, you know, flat earthers. It's, it's kind of like uh, where Bitcoiners see uh, you know, that the earth is, is round and we're going, running around going, guys, it's, it's not flat. And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> of course it's flat. And, and you just got to wait for them to discover it themselves sometimes. But uh, you're right. It's, um, you know, Bitcoin is subtraction in, in, in that sense. You know, it's not, it's not additive. It's, it's, it's been stripped back to its, um, you know, just uh, what's necessary, um, you know, essentialism, if you will. And I'm, uh, I'm a big minimalist. So, um, I don't know how it actually. I don't know how it started. I, I moved to um, to Italy and then London, sort of when I was around thirty for a couple of years, and I had to sell everything except what I had on in a backpack, and I, and it felt very liberating. I was like, "This is this is amazing." And then even once I, you know, got a house again and whatnot, I just kept things to basics. You know, like I've, I've got a couple of guitars. I don't have guitar amplifier. Like, just don't. I just don't have stuff like. Um, to the point where my family come over and think it's really weird. Like they open our kitchen cupboards and I've got a wife and two kids, but we usually just got like six cups, you know, um, you know, enough knife and knives and forks for us. Like we don't have that third drawer full of rubbish or it's, um, I don't have a garage. I don't have like just very little furniture, just, um, super minimal. Um, but what we do have, like, we really value, like it's, it's really, um, if, if I keep something, it's, um, really dear to you know to my heart for whatever reason and because i live life that way based more on meaningful moments rather than possessions uh bitcoin makes a lot of sense to me in that respect because it, it does feel like a, a form of financial minimalism or, or, or wealth minimalism like when i used to track property i had these stupid crazy spreadsheets with you know stupid formulas in it and um, you know, all these expenses and, and, you know, you hand that over to the accountant and it's, um, it's just a, an absolute nightmare. And it used to sort of toil me up inside because I'm, I'm, I like to just free my mind of noise. 
um, and just focus on 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 love and 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 moments. Um, so yeah, Bitcoin is giving me that back. Like I really like. I know it's cheesy, but you know the hope of of Bitcoin is just. Uh, I feel, I feel really hopeful about um, the future again. Like I feel like I know where uh, what our financial future looks like. Um, I, I feel like I can help other people better see that. And it's not messy. It's just really simple. Almost I don't know. Almost falls into some in, somehow into the fabric of the universe, like the simplicity of it, um, without getting too hippie woo woo. But um, so. That that was a, a big tick for me to, to just the simplicity of um of of Bitcoin and just makes sense. So. Uh, amazing. I also before we got on the podcast, I saw your uh, Twitter just to see like what what are some recent tweets that you made, and there was one thing in there that I never heard anyone say before. Uh, in in that uh, in that framework you brought up the statistics that Bitcoin is actually not 15, but 80 years old. You, I was, you remember I was, that? I was quite proud of that one, actually. That came to me one morning when I woke up. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I kind of uh, logic through, because that's, that's an argument that people, you know, say, and, and, and that, was, that was definitely a barrier that I had. I thought, um, you know, the confidence that I had in buying property was the fact that, it, you know, it's... Um, you got decades of, of data that that uh, you can I guess um, flip forward and go yeah well history says this is likely to happen and Bitcoin you go 15 years young like that you know in the early days I went that's nothing you know like that's that's um, that really could you know just die in the ass is what I used to think then yeah just just did the simple maths and just went um, you know if we uh, just calculate how many hours Bitcoin has traded um, since inception, you know, 24-7, uh, 365 for the last 15 years. Uh, and, and you sort of uh, superimpose that across, what is it, 9.30 uh, a.m. to 4 p.m. For, for usual trading markets, um, NASDAQ or, or stock markets. Uh, yeah, it extrapolated out to about 80 years. And I was like, interesting. Um, maybe maybe Bitcoin isn't as uh, as young uh, and and you know inexperienced as as uh, we might think, and that actually gave me a lot more confidence looking at the you know the four year cycles and the charts. Like even though they feel like four years and that they're, they're quite compressed, I think we we forget that there's this twenty four seven trading uh, happening uh, on a global scale as well. Like mind you, like uh, I'll sell a property in in Sydney and that's going to be attractive to um, you know a handful of investors in a radius of that property maybe maybe interstate or but pretty much that's the call the call resale market like you know someone in Austria isn't isn't interested in buying my investment property here or someone in South America um, but yes so we got this global stage as well, which I think p people underestimate. So yeah, when you, you see the volatility and whatnot, you go, "That's because it's such a freaking desirable asset." <laughs> like that's, that's the only way I can explain it. But um, so anyway, I, I, I look at the um, at, at those four year cycles with a lot more depth now that I, I guess I had that bit of a revelation. I love it a lot, uh, which mo makes me also wondering um, right now where you were in real estate and traditional finance and now you're in Bitcoin. Um, did you learn about money while in Bitcoin or how, did your view on money in general uh, on the financial system in general completely change while you were in uh, getting into Bitcoin? Uh, it can, it changed. I, I realized I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know nearly as much as I should, uh, should have known. Uh, I was, I was very much in a, in a, a very, uh, siloed way of thinking about money. Um, pro pro some fun fundamentals I had, uh, with property, um, from day one was inflation. Like, so the, the inflation rate here is, you know, the, the inflation goal, just sounds crazy to say out loud is two to three percent, you know, and that and that's that's the recorded or you know, CPI. Um, and uh, so I went, okay, if the government uh, try to grow the economy two to three percent, 
a year and then real estate is going up seven, eight, ten percent, um, you know, then I'm winning by the difference. Yeah. Um, and even if there is no difference, like at least I'm, and it only goes up with inflation, then at, you know, at least I'm getting, you know, two or three percent, but on the, on the, on the entire asset, you know, value, not just my stake, you know, not just my deposit value in that property. And, uh, but I didn't. I didn't dig deeper like I should have. I, I should have gone. Well, what's what's money? The the best question you can ask yourself. Uh, what's uh, what's inflation? Like why why is it a thing? Why is it good? Um, just because they tell us it's good. Like and uh, so yeah, I had an understanding that these things existed, but but didn't you know dive into 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 why certainly didn't dive into how you um you know how they create money through credit um which was which is uh given that i was issuing credit or you know party to that uh you know that kind of blows my mind that i didn't you know didn't really understand that but um i think uh I don't think I'm alone. Like I, I think most people that operate in in, that, in the TradFi system don't really know what you're doing. You you sort of you think you're helping. I'm going to help someone buy their home or an investment. I'll I'll help fund that. Um, I'm helping them uh, acquire assets that go up in value so they can you know secure their their financial future. So you're driven by the right things, but again, from within a shit system. Um, within a broken system, so it's um, you, you need to get outside of the system to to see it um, for what it is. Different different frame of reference. You're you're definitely not alone. Um, one really famous example is Michael Saylor. He is on the record that he said he did not understand mo what money actually is uh, till he found Bitcoin, uh, and that's amazing because he was the longest served. Uh, publicly traded CEO. He has billions, billions of US dollars. Uh, he is so entrenched and so deep in the fiat system that he knows more about it than 99.99% of the people on earth about it. Um, and he's also very clever now with, with using the fiat system to get as much po uh, exposure to Bitcoin as possible, which is amazing. Um, but he did not understand what money is. And that's That's amazing. Like someone like him, uh, who's experienced, who has done so great in, in life, he coming out and saying on, uh, on the internet and saying like, Oh, I did not understand what money is. Bitcoin learned me what money is. That, that's it. I, I've even watched uh, his, some of his earlier videos to that point. And even some of the, th the stuff from, um, I guess 2020. I can hear him talking differently now about those same things or just elaborating uh, deeper. And when I've gone back to older ones, I'm like, oh, I can see he was, yeah, he wasn't as uh, uh, you know, eloquent with how, yeah, you could just see, you can see the evolution, um, which makes you feel good because you sort of go, that's, that's, it's interesting. You're like, you know, as you said, if it's someone like Sailor can, uh, you know, can be a billionaire and still not understand money the way he does now, um, then yeah, we're, we're, we're not alone. And what, what that, that gave me a lot of confidence. So what, what I tried to do is, uh, so the first video I watched with my wife of, of sailor was, um, the Bitcoin, uh, the BTC Prague 2023, where he talks, you know, he's got the 900 trillion, um, and, and, and talking about, uh, Bitcoin sort of, you know, taking um portions of the existing existing market and what really what i did was i sat back and went you know how how can we you know like everyone's got you know their net worth at any given point you know and we're all at different positions and all sailor did was sit there and go okay this is my net worth i've got 500 million dollars um you know and it's and it's melting Like how, what, what maneuver do I need to do to, to, um, to turn this negative into a positive? And, and we did the same. So I, I sat there and went, well, what do we need to do? That's, that's where we went, okay, we're selling these properties <laughs> where, you know, what debt can we arbitrage? So a lot of people have, um, you know, that have a home loan, for example, they're like, let's get rid of the debt. Let's, let's, let's pay this down as soon as possible. Once this debt's gone, 
then we'll do the investing thing. And, you know, it's interesting to talk to people and go, well, what if you thought of that differently and you made friends with debt and you actually look at debt that's secured against your house and think of it as an asset and go, well, this is a an instrument, a tool that is going to cost me 6% to use. And if I use it somewhere, that's going to give me more than 6%. I'm obviously ahead. So instead of having, you know, if I've got a, a home loan and I've got, a, you know, $100,000 there of, of savings or 10000 whatever the figure is, um, by having it in the home loan, it's saving me 6% in interest. But if I convert that into Bitcoin, I'm going to make 45, 50, 55% in interest minus the 6% that I lose over here. And in fact, if you structure it properly, in some countries and here anyway, the interest on the 6% could possibly be tax deductible because it's for an investment purpose in Bitcoin. And as you know, I'm talking to normal everyday people, mums and dads that, that might have the option to do that if they already have a property with some equity in it that they could lend against. Um, it becomes really interesting because you know, here's an interesting scenario. You've got hundred thousand dollars that you, you can take out of your property and what if you purchased, say, $70,000 worth of Bitcoin and you had 30000 left over to service the interest repayable or the repayments on the 100000 So you're not actually needing to you know, uh, pull money out of your cash flow or your, your, your normal everyday budget um, to service this $100,000 loan. The loan services itself. Because you don't, you you left that thirty thousand there as the um as the to make the repayments. So you've you've kind of got this self feeding, um you know, financial instrument if you will, um that can just uh, sit there. It doesn't affect your lifestyle. Um and all the while you've got uh you know a stake over here in an asset that's um appreciating at fifty you percent know, or whatever it's going to do over the next few years. So um I think that's a really interesting safe way to do it because it's secured against property it's it's not it's not going to get margin called like the bank's not going to come and say it's you know B- bitcoin's gone down what it's just a very safe uh yeah safe way to approach a uh, a bitcoin strategy so yeah that's a, that's a few of the conversations i've been having with people lately anyway so you um are thinking of like loaning out your your bitcoin to to get uh if to get paying fiat bills uh no so that scenario i was just talking about then would be uh so if you had a house and you've got a home loan against the house um you can you can borrow against the house to buy bitcoin is the same strategy would you recommend that was with bitcoin or is it too early and uh, the the providers for that is still too early in the game yeah i've i've looked a lot at this because of my background in lending. Um, so I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, Unchained Capital, um, uh, probably one of the biggest uh, players in that in the space. They, they do multi-sig uh, collab custody, but they also do uh, Bitcoin. Like, like they lend against your Bitcoin at, at a rate something like 14%. Um, and they do it for one year uh, stints. So you can do a 12-month 12 uh, contract. And they, I think you can leverage up to about uh, maybe about 30 or 40% of your Bitcoin holdings. In terms of, yeah, I, I did think about it and there's, there's a few other lenders that do it because I thought, oh, you know, well, stake your Bitcoin to buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> I, I, I feel I'm more comfortable doing that against property. Uh, at the moment, because there's no margin call on property, so if you know the the, the property loan is is there for 30 years, and uh, it doesn't matter the value of the property, they're not going to come and say your, your property's dropped in value. We need to you, you need to repay your loan, but that that can happen with a, a loan against Bitcoin. Um, that's why the the loan to value ratios are sort of 30, 40 percent at the moment. Um, but probably my biggest. Um, a barrier for that at the moment would be the custody issue with with the bitcoin because if you would you would have to um the way that they explained it to me was uh you put it in some sort of escrow scenario where i would have a a, i think it's a two or three multi-sig so i would have a key 
the the third party has a key and unchained capital has a key um so no one party can control the bitcoin until the loans repaid but i guess i had a problem with the fact that those other two parties could collude and and steal my coins which um i guess they're thriving you know that they're, they're they're established businesses and that's probably not likely but it's not impossible either um so when i've thought about bitcoin lending um i've thought about it more for future maybe 10 or 20 years where i don't i don't want to sell my bitcoin i want to live off it in retirement and i'm going to loan against it so instead of selling some which would trigger a capital gain event and i'd have to pay tax on that i just want to borrow against it and Live, live, you know, live off the money uh, that I've borrowed against it, and then as the Bitcoin continues to go up, repay the loan uh, as you go, and then rinse, repeat. And I think by the time that's happening, I'm assuming, I'm hoping, I'm thinking, Bitcoin will be worth enough where I don't have to put my entire stack of Bitcoin up for collateral. You just do a little, a little portion, and you get to control your own, you know, the, the king's portion of the rest of your Bitcoin. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's how I'm seeing it in the next uh, decade or three. There are a lot of uh, products out there that, that do things like that. And I did not look too deep into that because, as, I, as you said, I, like, I don't want to get like Bitcoin is this pristine asset and I want to protect it at all costs. And if there are some possibilities that someone can conclude against me, I don't want that. <laughs> So, yeah. so the, even the possibilities, even if it's very unlikely that Unchained with a third party, they're doing something because they have an established business, they don't want to lose that business and stuff like that. So the, the likelihood of that happening, I don't put it high, but the, the, there is a likelihood. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, and it's so, we're, you know, as everyone says, we're so early and, be, and because we're early, um, there's, uh, these things aren't as systemized or, um, or, or, or widely accepted or standardized um, as as they will be in the years to come, you know, and, and not too long, you know, may, maybe, you know, three, five, eight years, you know, something like that. So I, I think, you, you know, you don't want to be a guinea pig <laughs> uh, along the way. You want to play it as safe as possible. Um, and, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, quite interesting. But uh, yeah, I, I do find it interesting to toy with the idea of um, uh, lending against Bitcoin or at least having it there uh, as a future thing. And, and I, I talk to people in, you know, Bitcoin meetups that are already think, forward thinking um, about, you know, tax jurisdictions in retirement, like, you know, uh, you know Lugano or, or El Salvador or Dubai or, or whatever the case. Um, because, uh, yeah, that's um, that the fact that you can pick this up and, and move to another country with 12 words in your head blows my mind. That's, 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 um, that that very much resonates with my freedom and minimalism uh, uh, values. So um, yeah, but I, I really see in the next ten years, you know, uh, the traditional finance system of home loans and mortgages changing wildly because it's it really is archaic um, at the moment. And I think I'm speaking universally around the world. Um, you know, going to a bank. Uh, I mean, I was in I was in a bank today um, with someone who, assisting with something, and um, they they still ask these dodgy questions like, you know, what's your living expenses, and and you go, they're like, oh, I'll show you, and they're like, oh, we don't need to see it, like they it's doing this dodgy stuff still, and you, you got to go through this approval, and I just love that Bitcoin's permissionless. It's like, here's my Bitcoin, lend me some money, if I don't pay the money back, you can have my Bitcoin. Like it's it's a very simple uh, arrangement, very minimalistic, um, and uh, you know if you don't want to lose your Bitcoin, you make your repayments. And um, but but somehow that's got uh, very convoluted and 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 difficult with with home loan lending for some reason. It's it's like you've got to give a a, a blood sample in your first born, born child just to get a home loan these days. Like the the amount of information that you've you've got to disclose. <laughs> Is is absolutely insane. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it just reminded me of something, Robin. Uh, I I ordered a um a hardware wallet, and um 
I, I did my first, uh, I'm going to do it, you know, anonymously, right? So it just, you know, f- fake name, da, da, da. And then I go to pick it up and they, they won't deliver it to a post office box that I, that I said. And they said, you've got to come and pick it up. But when I went to pick it up, you've got to show ID. And I was like, that de- defeats the purpose of <laughs> being, like being anonymous. I was trying to be a true Bitcoiner. And uh, anyway, I was able to go there and just show them the order form and, and do, my, do my alias. But um, again, just, just trying to order something as simple as a hardware wallet is, uh, you know, you, you've got to show, you've got to identify yourself. It's like, give, give, give me my freaking property. Like I, I've ordered this, like it doesn't, doesn't matter what name I attach this, you know. So um, Bitcoin makes all that simpler. Yeah, I, I mean, I get when you have to prove that it's actually your order. That, that's an, an alleged thing. But why should we use identity for that? Like, why can we not have a proof of like the order form or like the payment or like uh, in the future, it would be also interesting to just like throw a transaction ID or something. I don't know, like anything uh, outside of like, you don't have to show your identity for that. Yeah, well, I mean, when you think of Noster and 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 whatnot, like you know, a, a cryptographic um, key signing, right? Like, um, you know, anything that that proves it was you that placed that order. And uh, the, the guy behind the counter, uh, he, he he was ringing the phone. And he's like, because I put a fake phone number, and he's ringing. He's like, I'm ringing your number, and I'm like, okay, you come clean. I uh, I I put a fake phone number. I'll tell you the number I put. Anyway, he didn't seem to care enough to to you know to, to bother with it he's like okay i think it's yours here you go which which i thought was interesting in itself um but uh yeah just just all these barriers that come up in life that just aren't necessary and, and as i said i think uh bitcoin is a pristine collateral will just make you know so things so much more simpler especially once the keys and custody um you know become uh, a lot more mainstream and standardized so uh yeah i'm looking forward to uh the future it's hopeful so it's, it seems uh it seems fun again <laughs> absolutely it's it's definitely fun um i mean i, I will, i'm grateful that i actually live up in in that future and i have bitcoin since i'm 21 like that's that's uh, that's a major thing for me um coming to that uh, a little bit closer to the end um where do you see bitcoin's future in 20 years and you can go wherever you want to go with that question <laughs> different different routes you can go yeah, look, I, I really think um, I, I think it will be. Uh, I'm going with Sailor. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow uh, in in his footsteps in terms of where where he thinks it's gonna go. I mean, even price uh, aside, I mean, it's almost crazy. Like uh, you know, plugging in predictions into into spreadsheets when you when you do your, your bear and your base and your bull case. And, and you see like these, you know, the multi-million, you know, tens of millions of dollars in terms of fiat um, terms anyway. Um, and, but, but I, I also see how that can happen. Like, um, but even that aside, I just think Bitcoin wins regardless of price appreciation because it just makes sense. It's maths, it's science, it's fair, it's equitable. Um, and, as you as people unplug one by one to that and and which is i guess the interesting task at hand because you you've got to you know i guess someone's got to see that you know what they've uh, known to be true their entire life is not true um so I, I guess that's the mountain where we're all trying to climb with it but once you sort of reach the uh the summit you like it's it's yeah you you see it for what it is so i see it as i just see it as 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 a fair and equitable world and um people will on on ramp at at different points and you know it will feel unfair because people will be discovering it at, at different times just like it might feel a little unfair for us discovering it now as opposed to 5 years ago or or whatever the case um but that's that's just life and and evolution and Darwinism, if you will, uh, I think Bitcoin is structured in a way that that kind of doesn't really matter anyway. Like, I'll bring it back to the property analogy. You know, I used to say say to people like, you know, when was the best time to buy property? You know, twenty years ago. When's the second best time to buy property? Today. Um, and and that that's you know, it, you know, a million times truer with with Bitcoin. You know, like it, it's going to be a good time to buy it 
today and and in you know five years or in 20 years um so it's uh it's always going to be relative to everything else that's going on so uh yeah i'm uh, as i said it's uh i'm excited about money again money got money got boring and transactional and now it's gone back to um to being how it sh- i think it should have always been so absolutely um last question before the end routine uh what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already mentioned in the podcast oh my goodness i i'm uh, what can you learn from me i i think probably what i bring to the to the table is a an, an interesting overlay of of property investing and and traditional finance and and lending uh, I guess I guess you will with with some sort of rock and roll fuck you system uh, attitude over you know <laughs> overlaying overlaying all of that. So uh, I th- I think what I what I've brought to Bitcoin for myself um, I, I probably wouldn't have had the, the the balls or the the foresight to do what I'm doing with Bitcoin if I hadn't have had the experience with with property and, and losing money large amounts of money you know making some money and 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 all those different things that you just uh have by being involved in a in, in a you know uh, in finance and property and just i guess like the evolution of life um so uh i i guess my superpower with people is helping them feel understood with um the, the woes of because you know, everyone gets stressed about money there's there's no one that doesn't stress about money it really it really is the root cause of half the world's problems and um i i've been on the phone to people through deaths of partners and parents and divorces and uh just divorces over money like just you know lot, lots there's so, so much money struggle um and as i said before i've kind of therapied people through that to help them feel heard and um and see the light and see what opportunities they can explore and they were suffering all of that because they're fucking being stolen from right so but i didn't know that at the time (laughs) uh like i know it now so now that i can see that i can i can better you know help people through that and go yeah this is what's going on um and We've actually got the solution now, um, and yeah, I, I'm just encouraging people to study Bitcoin. I'm not, I'm not shouting uh, buy Bitcoin, you know, price predictions. I'll leave that for for other people. I'm just like, just just a few hours, you know, scrape the surface, get interested, and um, yeah, I think that will serve. I think I think that will serve people well, and then you know, their future self will will thank them for taking a few hours just to to check out a video or two on YouTube. Absolutely. 100% agree with you. It was a, such a pleasure talking with you. Um, now we come to the end routine uh, of our podcast where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually uh, is. And your question from the previous guest is, what aspect of Bitcoin philosophy is most appealing to you and has the best impact on people you share it with? What aspect of Bitcoin philosophy? Um, I would have to say the so many (laughs) there's so many layers to to bitcoin but i i love i love the fairness i I love that it's rules without rulers um and um yeah i'll keep it simple i I, I just think it's fair and equitable and uh it 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 makes sense to um (laughs) I've, i've always likened it to trying to build a house with a ruler that keeps that that bends or or, or that uh, or that you know instead of having you know zero through to nine like there's a, there's a new integer in there you know someone makes up an integer between five and six and you're trying to build the fucking house and 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 you can't and it's the same with English you know we, we've all agreed that there's there's 26 letters in the alphabet and um, you know we and, and we build on that uh so i i love that this is a that it's a, a protocol that we've all arrived on um that we can go it, it it's fixed it's it is what it is but the, those limitations um or boundaries if you will uh make it you know 
infinitely and wildly um, creative in, in, in terms of how you can uh, play with it and, and do um, and, and make amazing things and, uh, and make a better world. So, um, yeah, that's, that's where I'll go with that. Amazing. Perfect. And uh, thank you. Before I let you go, where can people find you? Where can people reach out to you? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not around a, a great deal, but uh, yeah, probably on, uh, I'd say on X, uh, Matt Prez uh, underscore at, uh, at X is, uh, is a good place to start. Perfect. Thank you, Matt, for, for being on my show. Also for thank you for everyone that's watching and listening for joining us today. I'll be back as always tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.